please, 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 I hope everybody behaves better this year up at the park. It was a rough year in the park just with bad behavior and people pooping everywhere and leaving garbage everywhere and uh, illegally camping everywhere and getting too close to the wildlife and just being disrespectful in general. <laughs> I'm back for part two, part two of the 2020 top 20 video. So how many did we make it through? We went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We made it through eight on the first video and a bunch of me rambling. So I can finish the next 12 in this video. I'm sure of it. Uh, okay. So we finished up last time with Africa and that uh, beautiful rhinoceros out in Ngorgoro Crater. The next photo then, that happened in February. My next favorite photo happened in May. And this would have been within two days, two or three days of when Grand Teton and Yellowstone National Parks reopened uh, after complete lockdowns. And uh, up looking for bears, Grizzly 399 came out with four cubs in May and that was an amazing story. Uh, and made for a very interesting summer here in the Tetons. But that's a story for another time, another video, and probably a different person to tell. Anyways, uh, this photo happened shortly after the parks reopened, and uh, everybody was up there, myself included, looking for bears, really. There was grizzlies everywhere, and it was wonderful. Uh, and then I got a phone call from a fellow photographer, uh, who I won't name, but thank you, very much, you know who you are. Even though you probably don't watch my videos, I'll like telepathically send you another round of thank yous uh, for letting me know about this situation because the, the phone call was, hey, there's a wolf on a carcass near the road. Get here. I was like, okay, cool. And it was an hour away from where I happened to be at that time and there was only about an hour and a half of daylight left. So I was like, uh, do I go? Eh, I don't know. That's ah, a wild wolf close to the road. And so I went for it. And uh, when I got there, there was just a little bit of light left. And this wolf was amazing. It was gnawing on this elk. Beautiful black wolf in a snowstorm. By the time I got there, I only had a few minutes to shoot it. One, because there wasn't much light left. And then two, because after I pulled up, then a couple other cars noticed us and pulled up as well. And then the wolf got a little uncomfortable and it dragged the carcass off behind a tree just like 10 more feet away, but it was then behind the tree, so I couldn't shoot it anymore. But it was amazing to watch, amazing to see, and then I, I managed to sneak in a couple of nice photos, you know, with the snow piling up on this black wolf's back, the snow falling, and then, of course, the, you know, the bloody elk in the foreground. Um, this particular frame, you know, has all that stuff, but then it's also, you can see its teeth, as it was kind of trying to get that elk hair out of its mouth a little bit, it was kind of doing that now, 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 trying to get rid of some of the elk hair. But it showed the teeth and, uh, you know, I had several frames in this sequence that were all really nice, but this was the only one where the teeth were visible like that. And that's kind of that little bit extra that makes this photo better than the others from that sequence. So this one was taken with the D850 and the 600 millimeter F4, ISO 1600 F4, one two hundredth of a second. So two hundredth of a second is like as absolute slow as I would let it go. Um, I, you know, I would have preferred to be at four hundredth of a second there, but uh, I like to keep it at ISO sixteen hundred when possible. So I was right on that fine line, and I just chose to shoot this series at a slower shutter speed, but with the better image quality of ISO sixteen hundred on that. D850 is magnificent, but at 3200, you have to kind of work on it a little bit more to make it look good. So anyway, a wonderful image. Black Wolf showing me his teeth. Snow piling up on his back. Well, you can see all that, but it was great. Um, back in Yellowstone again, this was only a couple of days after that wolf image was made, and 
this was like, I took this one while I was making a YouTube video that's, I think has been my, my most positively commented on video that I've ever made. And that was the one where, um, uh, Stephanie, my fiance and my childhood friend, Mike came along with me for the day just to go cruise around in, see the sights basically, and uh, asked me to find him some cool stuff to see. And we went for a drive and, uh, made a cool video. I'll link to that below. People loved it. And uh, I also made some images that day. And this one was on a mostly frozen Yellowstone Lake. We found a pair of river otters that were cruising the lake hunting. And then, you know, we kind of followed them as they cruised along, you know, under the ice and over the ice and all this. And this one was my favorite image of that sequence. It's a very small in the frame otter. This is an environmental scene where we've got the clouds, and then you can see all the way to the other end of the lake, and just all the breaking up ice, and then this little tiny otter, and the, and the shape of the otter, you know, I've got a bunch of frames that are very similar to this, but this one has the right leg position and the right body position to be that lovely curve, very aesthetically pleasing, um, up on top of the ice, and I couldn't have hoped for anything better than this on that day, so I love this image, it turned out great. This one was taken with the Nikon Z7 um, F8, ISO 400, 1 1600th of a second. And this was at 150 millimeters. So kind of medium telephoto length. Love it. Very good. Converted it to black and white because those trees at the horizon line had a very blue tint to them, which I felt was pretty distracting on this photo. Okay, now we are into the Tetons. We're into June. Uh, a couple of black bear cubs. And I ran in, into these, these bears. There were actually three cubs and mama uh, while out hiking. So I was all alone with these bears. And I just had a blast watching them play and you know, once in a while I'd move or something and then then the cubs would look at me or, you know, like this, this one in particular at the bottom of the tree, I had to move when I saw this, the one up top climbed up on the tree and he was up there, but I had a tree in my way. So I just had to move a few feet. And when I moved that few feet, the one at the bottom looked straight at me as he was about to, you know, climb up after the other bear. But as I moved, it, it kind of turned and looked at me for a second. And that's when I was able to make that photo to get the eye contact with the, the one at the base of the tree there. But this one is one of those where I mentioned where it's not necessarily one of my best photos of the year, but I had such a blast with these four bears, with mama and three cubs, and they were so playful and they were so comfortable. Um, you know, I, I was there with them for a couple of hours and giving them plenty of space, but obviously they knew I was there. They never any kind of weird aggression or anything. Um, but they kind of just, they went about their day and they went about their business. And I had an absolute blast photographing them. So this was kind of my favorite photograph from, from that series. And it's a cute photo, but this one for me was more about the experience and the memories of spending time with those bears. So this was the Nikon D850, uh, with the 300 millimeter F4 PF lens, which is wonderful. I'm at 1 250th of a second F4 ISO 3200. So this was pretty dark there in the forest, and I had to crank up that ISO to 3200 in order to get enough shutter speed. And uh, the photo turned out great. I love it. Here's a badger. Uh, I had fun photographing badgers this spring. Had a couple of dens uh, that I was photographing, made some really nice badger photos. So it was kind of hard picking out my favorite badger photo of, of the season, really. Uh, my friend Irene, she was kind of instrumental in helping me get this photo and some of those badger photos in that she made me aware of, uh, it was actually a different badger den than this one, but it was in a similar area and I would have never found this one if I hadn't have gone to that one. Anyway, so this one was a Nikon D850 again, the 600 millimeter F4. 1 1,000th F4 ISO 1600. 
This was taken right after the sun went down. So badgers are very high contrast subject with the black and the white. So direct sunlight usually doesn't work very well on them. It can be quite harsh. Uh, so I kind of waited for the sun to go down before you know, looking for this photo. Um, I made a bunch of nice photos of like kind of the expected photo of them at their den entrance, mom and babies, and them like, you know, snuggling up and her bringing in gophers to the babies and, and all that. And it was wonderful. I got to photograph and shoot video of all that behavior. And I really got to spend a lot of time with badgers this spring. And this one is kind of an odd photo in that uh, it's not the expected cool badger photo. You can't see its teeth. It's not like gnawing on a gopher. Um, but I liked just its environment was just green. And I went to F4 just to blur out the background, to just totally destroy it. And um, I shot it vertical just to show kind of as much of that beautiful lush green meadow as I could. Um, and I just waited until it was in a position where it was facing straight at me as it was hunting along. And then, it, you know, every once they, they go nose down after things, and then they look up every once in a while, and then they get back down to hunting. So this was one where it looked up, and I was set up, waiting, 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 click, 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 and then it goes back down to hunting, and off it went. So I, I just kind of went for an unusual composition here. I like it. This is one of those things where I was talking, you know, on part one of the video about just trying some different stuff and failing a lot. This one to me felt like uh, a good thing. I liked the way this one turned out a lot. Even though it's a little unconventional, maybe a little bit boring compared to the ones where you can see its teeth and it's got a gopher in its mouth, you know, and the gopher's head's like bent over and all that stuff. I made those too, but I like this one better for some reason. Uh, okay, on to the next one. Now we're, we're into um, July with Comet Neowise. Now, I went out, I made a couple of videos about Comet Neowise. If that interests you, check them out. Look through my channel there. I think there's two of them. But anyway, one of the things that obviously I wanted and every other Teton area photographer wanted was a photo of the Comet with the Tetons. And I went out a few days or a few nights and, and shot the comet. This was my favorite one of the Tetons with that comet. And, uh, you know, the, the reason being that I, that I like this one was, I, the, you know, I moved north and south a couple of different ways. And I, I had been kind of placing it right at the tip of the Grand. But then that was a little bit too much, you know, the Grand with the thing touching, the comet touching the tip of the Grand. It was like... I don't know, it just felt a little weird. But so anyway, I, I kind of offset it a little bit to be between the Grand Teton and Tiwanot. It's pointing more at Mount Owen right now. Um, and I, so I liked this angle and every the mountains and the ground and everything goes into silhouette when you're shooting it that dark. Uh, it, that happened to be one of the very bright nights. So that tail's huge, big, beautiful tail on that comet. Um, I kind of, all that, ground, the foreground going into silhouette kind of bothered me. It was too much. So I went out there with a flashlight during this exposure. And uh, this was an eight second exposure. So during that eight seconds, I took a flashlight and did a little bit of light painting out on that sagebrush just to give it a little bit, uh, you know, less mystery out there of, of what that ground is like and just a little bit punch of light. And uh, so this this particular one with the light painting, I liked much better than just with everything going to darkness in front there. So anyway, as I mentioned, this was an eight second exposure. This was on the Nikon Z7 with the wonderful 50 millimeter F1.8 Nikon Z lens. Uh, and this is ISO 6400. And now we're on to a herd of bison. And I spent a lot of time photographing bison this year, and that was a lot of bison stuff I was doing was experimental, you know, trying weird compositions and trying different shutter speeds and um, a lot of stuff that didn't work. So bison are great subjects. Be, a lot of times they hang around. 
so you can find them and you have time to try different things and you have time to adjust your settings. You have time to review the images and see what's working and not working. So they're a good subject that they're around. You can find them and then uh, you can experiment and play and have some fun. So that's what I was out doing quite a bit late summer and early fall with the bison. Um, I was out there kind of playing around, doing some, you know, weird compositions and stuff. And then I found this, this herd of bison um, and just the way they lined up with the big bull front and center and then kind of the whole herd strung out behind them with Mount Moran behind and everything. It was kind of about the eye contact here and the whole herd coming in. Uh, that's what made this image to me compelling was the whole, all the bison that you see are looking this way with the biggest one kind of leading point there. So uh, I converted it to black and white there because I wanted it to really be about the contrast of the, the bison. So in the black and white there, I can, uh, I don't get the different colors of the green, greenish sagebrush and then the golden grass, and then the, the mountains kind of in the shade back there turn kind of bluish. So there's a, a bunch of competing and colors in there that I just get rid of them and uh, simplifies that image to be about the bison and that in the herd of bison. So anyway, this is Nikon D850, ISO 1600, F11, 1 160th of a second. Pardon me while I have a sip of peach bubbly, which is delicious. I'm going to hide that behind the vase. Now you can't even see it. So here we have two of Grizzly 399's Magnificent Four. This is my only photo, yeah, in the top 20 of uh, Grizzly 399's Cubs for the year, which is strange because that was like the star of the show, the Tetons. And on, on workshops, everybody wanted to see them. The crowds were insane up there. Everybody wanted to see them. It was total mayhem. Please, 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 I hope everybody behaves better this year up at the park. It was a rough year in the park, just with bad behavior and people pooping everywhere and leaving garbage everywhere and uh, illegally camping everywhere and getting too close to the wildlife and just being disrespectful in general. So it was rough out there, but I hope, I don't have much hope, but I would love to see this year be better because that was, that was one of the big bummers was how badly the parks were treated. Anyway, I'll get off my soapbox there. This was uh, Grizzly 399 and the four cubs had kind of been out and we'd been photographing them and then they disappeared for a while into the timber and they were kind of lost for a couple hours. People hadn't seen them, and I was kind of looping around looking for them, and I was driving down the road, and then bang, they just popped out of the trees right there, and then they all, you know, a few cars stopped. I was like the first one there in line to stop. As they came up on the road, I was right there, and so I was able to shoot, you know, with my door closed, I could just kind of stick the camera out the window and, and shoot from my, from my vehicle right there in the road. And the bears came up and they were wrestling and playing in the road a little bit. And I shot all that. And then uh, mama bear and the other two cubs had moved off to the left off the road. And these two were still in the, in the road wrestling. And this was kind of my favorite photo of that showing, you know, this was kind of like, this is Grand Teton National Park in, uh, Summer of 2020, the, you know, bears in the roads, cars everywhere, people taking pictures. It was kind of fun. But these two, just the, the pose of this one standing up, intimidating the other one and the other one getting ready to fight back. It was like just a really magic little moment there. So I was glad uh, I stumbled upon that scene and I just had a few seconds to make that photo. This was with the Nikon D850, uh, 1 500th of a second, F4, ISO 1600. Next photo is bison. As I mentioned, I photographed a lot of bison this year. And I made a lot of terrible bison photos. But this is not one of those terrible bison photos. I love this bison photo. This is like drama and intensity. So I was thrilled when I saw this scene, this bison had just rolled down in the dust. 
Uh, the light was coming from a very nice angle. It wasn't perfectly backlit. Uh, it was kind of a backside light there, just the right spot for all that dust to pick up the light and pick up all that texture. And then, so it was rolling around on its back. And then when he stood up, you know, it was a crapshoot whether he was going to stand up looking that way or that way or this way. And luckily he rolled around and then he stood up and looked right at me. So all that dust was still in the air and the light was hitting it. And then he looked right at me and click, click, click. And I was psyched. Because that one I knew was going to be a banger when I took it. And it turned out just beautiful. So this was with the Nikon Z7 F8 ISO 400 1 320th of a second. And again, in hindsight, you know, this happened pretty quick. Um, but I, in hindsight, I should have doubled my ISO there, which would have doubled my shutter speed. A 640th of a second would have been a little more appropriate. Um, it didn't, it ended up not mattering on this photo because this is tack sharp, but uh, there were a few in this sequence that had just a tiny bit of motion blur in them that would have been avoided if I had doubled that ISO, doubled the shutter speed. Okay, now we're into fall. And this one was taken on a workshop with a client. And this was one of those situations where that, that client was doing really well. And uh, this was at the end of the day and he was totally up to speed and totally shooting confidently. And when we saw this uh, mule deer here in this scene with the beautiful fall foliage behind him, I asked him like, are you comfortable shooting this without much input from me? Because uh, if you're not, uh, I want to make sure you get the photo. And if you are, I'm going to grab my camera too. And he said, yep, grab your camera. Let's go. So we went out in the field and um, we photographed this deer for probably, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. But this was my favorite photo of that sequence, where he's a beautiful big mule deer buck. The, uh, the foliage behind him is in wonderful fall color. And then he had just kind of attacked that little uh, tree in front there. So he has some of that tree still stuck in his in his antler there. So uh, everything about that's great. The tree in the antler, the background, the big mule deer, the shallow depth of field, it all worked just great. This was with the Nikon D850, the 600 millimeter F4, one two hundredth of a second F4 ISO 1600. I'm parched. I've been talking too much. I ramble too much. Here we are in my best great gray owl shoot of the year was up in Yellowstone National Park, like just a couple of days before the park closed. And this is a juvenile great gray owl after a snowstorm. And I had a amazing morning photographing this owl and another owl. And I made a great uh, video about that as well. So feel free to check that one out in my feed. But this was my favorite photo of that day, and it should be obvious to why. You know, just, this is one of those just obvious ones. Yeah, I mean, not an easy photo to get, but like when you've got a great gray owl hunting, you just, you point your camera at it and you push the button. <laughs> There's more to it than that, but uh, that's, that was the, the deal out there was just try and keep up with this owl and, uh, try and make sharp photos and try and not clip wings and try and keep it, you know, where in the frame you want it to be and look for nice backgrounds. Everything came together on that one. And uh, beautiful flight photo of a great gray owl there. So this was with the Nikon D850 and the 300 millimeter F4 PF. It was dark out there this mor that morning and I wanted to maintain a shutter speed of a thousandth of a second for these flight shots. So this one was shot as a thousandth of a second F4 ISO 3200. All right, now we're going off the deep end here on weirdness. This is a rooster. This is a wild rooster in Kauai. Cool, huh? <laughs> See, I, uh, I told you, it was a weird year. I actually made a print of this and it's hanging in the living room. And you know how I know that I'm marrying the right woman? She loves it. Or at least she tells me she loves it. Either way, that's a good woman. So 
anyway, this is a rooster. Uh, Stephanie and I were able to sneak away to Kauai uh, this fall. They opened it up for a period of time there for tourism, uh, as long as you got a negative COVID test within 48 hours of arriving there. So we were able to do that. And uh, our friends have a house there and allowed us to stay with them. Thank you so much. That was awesome. So it was just great to get away. Um, you know, everything was still COVID precautions there with, you know, having to wear masks and distancing and all that kind of stuff. But uh, at least they were letting people in and we were able to go there and do it safely. And we had an absolute blast. And one of the things that for whatever reason I wanted to photograph while I was there was, you know, waves. I love doing abstract wave photography. And, uh, but for some reason I got it in my head that I want to photograph some of those ubiquitous, uh, is that the right word? Ubiquitous? I'm going with it. The ubiquitous roosters of Kauai. And, uh, so I wanted one that kind of represents the rooster spirit there. And, uh, I got this and it, I couldn't be happier with it. So it made my top 20 of 2020 a rooster. cock a doodle doo All right, here we are. This is the final image of the 2020 top 20. And this is a lovely river otter. This was made, uh, I made a video this day. So you can watch that one too, if you're bored. I wanna see how this one was made. Um, this was, this was again, another one of those where I was trying different things where, you know, uh, uh, for some reason I had it in my head that I wanted a river otter with just snow around it. And I was looking for that shot actually for many days. I'd been photographing these otters for quite a few days. And, I, and that was one of the shots that I was looking for in particular was just, I just wanted an otter head just surrounded by snow. And I don't know why I wanted that, but that's what I wanted. And so I, I'd been shooting like, like the, the normal shots of it, them swimming and wrestling and coming up on the bank and eating fish and all that. And I got some great stuff of that too. But uh, finally, an opportunity presented itself where um, I noticed this little depression in the snow where there was clearly a little bit of open water. And uh, I just was hoping that an otter would pop his head up because the otters were in the main creek, just maybe like 40 yards back and they were playing and wrestling and, and I went and set up and waited here for this otter to pop its head up. Uh, I was watching that hole like a hawk because that's the shot I wanted. So eventually I, I, you know, I'm watching everything that's going on and then boom, I see a little head pop up out of that little hole in the snow, that little depression and was able to swing the, the 600 around and fire off a couple of frames and then it disappeared and it was gone. So uh, I was super psyched that this image happened. It was like one of those that I'd pre-visualized and it worked out just lovely. The, the one weird thing about this photo is that piece of grass. Uh, I've, I've had back and forths in my head about that piece of grass and I, it's still there, but I've had a lot of conflict about, ooh, I should just Photoshop that out. It would take like two seconds to Photoshop that out and nobody would ever know it was there. And I don't have a problem doing that ethically. Some of you might, but that's the thing with ethics there. That's my personal thing. I wouldn't have a problem removing that little blade of grass, but, and, and I thought about doing that. I thought it might help the image, but then I, for some reason, I, I kind of like it. So I've gone back and forth about that blade of grass. And I chose to leave it there for now. I think the image works with that little blade of grass. Uh, it almost, it's almost a weird little point of interest in that out of just a real quick, that first quarter of a second glance, you might think it's a part of the otter, like its tail, because there's the head there and then that little blade of grass. But then obviously it's not because it's too narrow. So it's almost like that little blade of grass makes you linger on the photo just an extra second or something to figure out what's going on there, I think. So, I don't know. Maybe let me know in the comments what you think about that blade of grass. But I chose to leave it in there, uh, but I'm still not 100% convinced that it should be. So, anyway, that was a total sidetrack. Sorry about that.
I love the image. It's simple, it's clean, it's snowy, and it's cute. It's got, it's got it all. So this was with the Nikon Z6 II. No, was this the Z7 II? I think this was the Z7 II, sorry. Um, we have the 600 millimeter f4 lens, 1 1250th of a second f5.6 ISO 800. Okay, so there it is. That's the last image of my 2020 top 20. Thanks for hanging in there. This was a lot. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope maybe you learned a little something. Um, I kind of apologize for all that rambling at the beginning of episode one there. Apparently, I had a lot to get off my chest, <laughs> and I didn't realize it. So I talked a little more than I would have liked. But I'm going to publish it anyways. And anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll see you again next year. Bye-bye. Just kidding. I'll be back soon with another video. Uh, I'm not sure what it'll be yet, but... I'll be back soon. Give me a week or so and I'll and I'll come out with a new video.